So we arrived in Patagonia and I always knew that it was going to be, I mean it's so close to Antarctica, it's like the tip of Chile um, and everybody calls it the marathon at the end of the world and as you are driving towards Patagonia and as, actually even as you're landing in, um, in Chile you kind of sort of can feel that it is the end of the world, the conditions are so harsh. So woke up probably woke up about two o'clock in the morning and as I could just hear the wind battering the windows in the hotel and I basically could didn't sleep very well because I was just getting more and more anxious about how how it was gonna feel to run in this wind. I never you know, you can't train for those conditions. Got ready and went to the start line and it was just a mild breeze at that point and I thought this is great, they must have got it all wrong. It was just very calm. From this sort of lovely silence, you know, you're getting into your own groove and, and the people, there's some people behind you, there's some people in front of you, but nobody sort of right next to. So you're only hearing your feet and that's kind of a really lovely thing to get into um, your own rhythm. And then all of a sudden the wind started and it started to pick up the road was carved and the path was carved into into the mountains I guess so you know you're you're sort of in a tunnel and then as you were in that tunnel and a gust would come it would swoop down this tunnel and and create a sort of a really howling sort of loud noise that you knew it was coming and you could see it coming um, and I guess that you know you one would pass and you would get your your rhythm back up and then you would hear another one come in and and you just knew what was about to hit and you sort of brace yourself for that and by the end you know you you feel like you're you're bracing every time you hear this sort of howl of the wind coming towards you um just to be able to you know keep your ground and um and deal with it basically it just got worse and worse and worse and then to the point where I got to the halfway mark I made friends with this uh, Mexican lady and we thought we'll stay together and then we can give each other respite from the wind. Me and this Mexican lady we actually crossed the finish line together and we collected our, our medals together and it was the most it was the most amazing feeling because you know I hadn't put any pressure on myself for what time I wanted to finish this race you know and I had finished it and it was the most incredible feeling. I'm not doing it to prove to myself that I can get over that finish line as fast as I can. I'm doing it to prove myself that I can get over that finish line. I can make the distance. And I, I feel like I'm getting, I'm obviously getting physically stronger through this process, but I'm getting so much more mentally stronger. And I feel proud that I've actually, yeah, that I'm, I'm achieving like, my dream really I, I've I'm hope once I finish this like that self-belief will go on to other things and I kind of will not just put it you know I won't just I'm hoping that it won't just be self-belief in sports it will be self-belief in everything else that I that I do